Web 3.0 is one of the hottest and the most polarized topics right now that is being discussed in technology and financial industry. So in this video, I'm going to talk and try to explain what Web 3.0 is, how it all started, how it is going to affect us and uh, how it is very important for us to know what's happening in this space. To understand Web 3.0 better, we need to understand what Web 1.0 is and what uh, Web 2.0 is. So let's start with web 1.0. 1.0 is the, the is the read only phase of the internet where websites or, or the internet used to look like a long Wikipedia pages where users uh, simply read those websites and there isn't much about much of an interactivity in those websites. So it used to be boring and probably that's the reason why they call the read only phase of the internet. So then came web 2.0, the giant leap from what we could do with uh, web 2.0 kind of you know, opened the doors for big uh, industries like big, uh, big technology companies like Google, Microsoft, Facebook, etc. And literally, uh, companies have bu uh, built billion-dollar industries based off Web 2.0 technology. Web 2.0 is considered as the read and the write phase of the internet, where uh, not only just reading the content on the uh, internet, you can also you know write content to it. Companies would save that information, run machine learning algorithms on top of that data, and you know sell that information to highest paid, you know highest paying advertisers, where they could place their ads on top of our uh, social media profiles and wherever the websites that we are browsing into. So this was huge, and everything has changed, right? With Web 2.0, whatever the comforts that we are living today are the products of Web 2.0. And you know it was clearly explained in this show called Social Dilemma on Netflix. That's not by accident, that's a design technique. What I want people to know is that everything they're doing online is being watched, is being tracked. Every single action you take is carefully monitored and recorded. I, I, I would highly recommend uh, to check out that show. So getting back to fast forward to 2016 when Facebook and Cambridge Analytica scandal came out, most people started thinking about data ownership, data privacy and how uh, data can be controlled and who is taking advantage of the data. So this moment kind of complemented with the uh, advent of the Bitcoin and blockchain white paper in 2009-2009. Uh, Back in 2008 and 2009, uh, an anonymous entity called uh, Hitoshi Nakamoto kind of released a white paper called Bitcoin on blockchain, which kind of you know draws out some of, some of the flaws in the current financial system and the way how we transact uh, with the current uh, banking system and financial institutions that we have in place. So. Uh, early adopters who identified the advantages of blockchain and Bitcoin started uh, developing applications which are focused on decentralization. So when I say decentralization, this is one of the fundamentals of blockchain. And after Cambridge Analytica scandal, which I just mentioned, everyone started building projects on uh, which are based off Web3 and completely based off uh, decentralization. In Web3.0, which is the core concept of this, this episode, our emphasis is made not just on read and writing data, but also the ownership of the data. Meaning you can actually create content and put over the internet where you can control how this uh, data can be distributed and how you can take advantage of uh, your content by uh, signing up uh, smart contracts. And a lot of blockchain based uh, projects and crypto cryptocurrencies matter of fact are all based off uh, Web 3.0 technology. Um, some of the big names that I can think of right now is you know Coinbase, Binance, Reddity.io and OpenSea.io. You might have heard uh, NFTs in kind of taking waves right now. Question that everyone was asking when they saw these headlines is why would anyone pay $69 million for a JPEG and a hyper All the NFTs right now, right now are actually being sold on Web3 uh, platforms like OpenSea.io Open or Reddity.io. So it is going to influence a lot in future because we're talking about metaverse, we're talking about big industries getting making their bets on getting, get, getting their fair share of uh, uh, you know, metaverse related projects, you know, Facebook has owed that he's, it's going to invest, uh, you know, $10 billion into building more and more projects in metaverse or, you know, meta related projects. In fact, they actually changed their brand as meta, you know, from he's spending Facebook. $10 billion on metaverse. Even Microsoft came, you know, came up with this, uh, you know, uh, you know, metaverse related project where they were focusing more on uh, the, the industry related, the un mm -hmm. this sense of collaboration and the feelings of connection it brings excites us. Hey, just in time. Looking for, I'm really looking forward from the, the Web 3.0 wave is to see uh, how uh, companies come up with the unique ways of doing things 
where uh, decentralization is the emphasis of those projects. So in, in my future videos, I'm going to identify some of the web, some of the, some of the good web three projects, probably the alternatives of the current trending alternatives of the big name, uh, big named uh, organizations with you. And uh, I'll look forward to making more videos uh, like this. If you really like this video and you found it informative, please consider subscribing my channel. Uh, that, that would be really encouraging to me so that I can make more and more videos. Uh, I hope to see you in another episode. Uh, ha have a good one and keep learning.